Hotel workers, what is your craziest story? Story one, bartender at a hotel next to LAX for almost eight years. One story always comes to mind when people ask. Guy comes up to the bar holding about 15. 20 balloons wearing nothing but a Speedo, no shoes. All he was holding was the balloons. It was 11 p.m. Our pool was closed. Asks for a glass of wine and my coworker, who is a quick thinker, asks, will you be paying by room charge? No, we'll pay cash. Coworker says, well, I can't serve you. Balloon guy gets angry and asks, why not? Well, if you can't do a room charge, you either have no form of payment or it's in your Speedo and I don't want that. Please leave. Some more words were said, but when he realized we weren't serving him, he says, well, I don't need these anymore. Let's the balloons hit the ceiling and walks out. I have dozens more involving way sweets, candy dealers, fight between multiple baby daddies. Yes, three different baby daddies plus mom with baby involved. That one was intense, but funny and sad. Federal marshal leaving his gun at the bar and just really drunk people. Glad I don't work there anymore. I'm in sales now with better pay and hours. But there were plenty of good times and overall a pretty solid job. Story two. In my three hours at a Hampton, we found many forgotten guns. Sometimes loaded, safety off guns in the nightstands. It's wild. Many rubber band, so many rubber band. I think the craziest that I've experienced is the annual crackheads. There were some crackheads, literally, that always checked in during our off-season. They're on the no-sell list, but there's always the new receptionist who doesn't think about it. There's a tall white man with dreads who is always in the mix. One time, I was tasked with the crack room. Our maintenance man would always go in first to check for needles. But this time, he found more fun goodies. A trash can full of cow, literally, and the bed destroyed. Sheets covered in every human fluid. I thankfully didn't end up having to touch the room. I ran into those people multiple times a day when they stayed. But I never got used to being approached by a 6'2 plus dreaded white man high on crack asking for towels. I always tried to be nice because I felt bad, but after trash can cow, I stopped caring. Oh my god, how did I forget this? Another known candy user threw his girlfriend out of the room when she was overdosing, and she got narcaned in the middle of the hallway. The floor was quickly steam cleaned, and many guests asked about the wet spot. I said it was coffee. Story 3. In the late 1980s, I was a senior in high school and got a job as a hotel security at an upscale hotel a few miles from the WWF headquarters, World Wrestling Federation. A lot of the wrestlers stayed at the hotel on a regular basis. I was doing my regular rounds, walking all of the floors of the hotel, checking various other areas of the hotel. I heard screaming through the hotel. I heard the screaming and headed towards it. It was a small toddler running down the hallway who ran up to me. I started to ask him what was wrong, and Hulk Hogan came sprinting down the hallway, grabbed his son, and said, Sorry about that. Then they retreated back into one of the hotel suites. Story 4. Not necessarily crazy, but my favorite. I worked as a housekeeper in a hotel that had a very large and diverse staff. There were people from Haiti, Japan, Mexico, Russia, and many more. Just think all over the world. There was a very kind Japanese man who I worked with who did not speak a lot of English, but he was very kind and always in a good mood. I noticed he had sort of a seemingly buddy-buddy relationship with another man we worked with. This man was Haitian and also spoke very little English. I never heard them talk to each other, but I would always walk in when they were laughing and dispersing. One day, I had the pleasure of witnessing them interact. I was refilling my housekeeping cart when the Japanese man walked into the room to access the elevator. The Haitian man looked up at him with a huge smile and he said, Yup! The Japanese man replied, Yup! and pressed the elevator button. The Haitian man replied once again, Yup! This went back and forth for about a minute before the doors opened and shut on the elevator. Another day I walked in and I witnessed the end of the interaction. I realized they did this every day. This is when I learned a simple yup transcends language barriers. It was the only word they needed to know and the only one they needed to say. Story 5. I used to work front desk at a hotel. I know items the craziest, but it's crazy compared to my normal WFH job. I had one regular who would try to flirt with me and get me to bring things up to his room. I told my good manager about this, and the next time the guest asked me to bring up a towel to his room, the manager went instead of me. The guest was waiting in his room. Another time, I had a different guest, a long-stay contract with multiple guys staying together, who seemed like a nice shy guy who I think liked me. His other friends tried to trick me into going into an elevator with just me and him, and I only used the stairs after that. Other drunk people would openly say they wanted close relationship with me no matter what, and I had to lock myself in our office until my managers came to help me. It was the absolute worst job. Story 6. 1. Car bombing an attorney's car in the hotel parking lot. It blew up. Conveniently, none of the cameras were pointed that way. 2. Guy terminated his wife by throwing her off the atrium balcony. He fell toy and both passed away. 3. Woman lost her psychiatric meds and went nuts. 4. 
Homeless guy named Jesus Godfrey worked for the CIA because God spoke to him and gave him intelligence. He freaked people out because he tried to exercise the whole hotel. 5. Saw Rick Springfield in his underwear. 6. Some guys from an old-school hip-hop group got warrants served and arrested while at the hotel. Story 7. Oh, Lord, where do I begin? 1. One resort I worked for had a guest order ice cream from room service. I don't recall exactly what happened, but the guest was pissed about something with the order and proceeded to deliberately dump the ice cream out of the bowl onto the floor and told the attendant it was his job to clean it up. When he went to get a towel from the cart, she blocked the door and told him he couldn't leave until he cleaned up the mess she made. Poor guy used the sleeve of his uniform shirt to do what he could. The following morning, the guest was invited to the resort manager's office where she was told that she was no longer welcome at the resort for the remainder of her stay and would not be welcomed back in the future under any circumstances. 2. Booked a group of high rollers from a well-known casino hotel in Vegas once. One evening, they went into town for a night out. About an hour after arriving back to the resort, a group of ladies who could best be described as entertainers showed up at the security gate claiming they were invited to visit the group. Turns out to be true, so they were allowed to stay. 3. A colleague was at the Port Cochere late one evening when a female guest came running up in nothing but a teddy, hysterical, and bleeding copiously from a head wound. She got into a fight with her boyfriend, who then threw her off a second-floor balcony. 4. During a rehearsal dinner, the mother of the groom got into a fight with her husband. She was totally cow-faced and started to beat the poor guy with her high heel sandal. My friend was the conference services manager handling the event, and he literally had to carry her to a golf cart to go back to her room and then carry her from the cart into the room, while her husband apologized profusely. 5. Finally, my personal favorite. We received a guest complaint about noise by one of our pools. Come to find out that a woman staying in a suite near the pool was locked out on her patio and was screaming, pounding on the sliding glass door. Room's director and head of security go to the suite, and find a man sitting on the sofa calmly watching TV. The two of them had gotten into a fight, and he deliberately locked her out on the patio. The best part, though, was the final line on the guest incident report. Mr. and Mrs. X are celebrating their honeymoon and will be with us for three more nights. Story 8. A dude rented a room for one night. Later, I noticed he brought a girl with him into the room. About 15, 20 minutes later, the dude leaves the hotel for the rest of the night, but the girl stays in the room. Will about two hours after the dude leaves a different guy shows up and goes to the room with they stay in the room overnight. So because the first dude checked in under his name, he had to be the one to check out. He shows up at about 8 a.m. I tell him the room needs to be inspected before he checks out to get his deposit back. So he goes to check on the room. Not five minutes later, I can hear shouting going on down the hall. I look at the camera and see the dude just waiting by the door. Meanwhile, the girl and the new guy are shouting at each other from within the room. The new guy not knowing who the dude is or why he's telling them to clear out the room. The girl just saying they are just friends and he was just renting the room for the night. This whole time, the dude is patiently waiting outside, telling the other guests walking out sorry for the inconvenience. We are about to call the police when the new guy stomps out of the room, looks over to the dude, and says, You need to start walking, boy. The dude just motions to him. You first. After a short stare down, the new guy walks off. Storms past the counter and leaves. The girl chases after the new guy. The dude goes into the room for about five minutes, then returns to the desk. He is still acting as polite as he can, but I could read his face that he was not in a good mood. After taking a look through the room, I can tell he did his best to get it cleaned up and give him his deposit back. He thanks me and leaves. Story 9. Some rich kids from Chicago on a lacrosse team got four rooms in the only 21-year-old with them's name. They lit fireworks off inside of the mini-fridge. They ended up leaving their wireless Bluetooth speaker that was really nice, and I kept it instead of turning it into the front desk. I knew they wouldn't be coming back because of the fireworks. Idiots. Story 10? Not me, but my ex. They had a guest that didn't show up to check out or something, so she had to go check on the room. She walked in to find the person a couple of days dead on the floor. Apparently, they had a heart attack. I imagine it must happen fairly regularly in the industry, but it still freaked her out real good. She quit soon after. Story 11. Former overnight concierge. Delivered late-night food to VIPs and celebrities all the time. Got a call for a delivery to the governor's suite. Delivered some food to a very famous celebrity and former NBA star one time. Lots of scantily clad ladies of the night and mysterious white powder on countertops and tables throughout the suite. Delivered to a First Nation casino executive. Tipped me with a very nice expensive watch. Story 12. Not a hotel worker, but while traveling cross-country, my husband and I stopped at a typically nice hotel chain to stay the night. When I booked online, the pictures looked great and the reviews weren't too bad. We pull in and immediately knew something was off. 
The entire parking lot was surrounded by a tall fence topped with barbed wire, and near the front door there were designated police parking spots. We were a little weary, but were only planning on being there to sleep, so we went in to check in. When we got inside, there were not one, not two, but three layers of bulletproof glass between us and the receptionist who spoke to us through a microphone. As she was telling us about our room, she proceeded to tell us that there was a strict curfew at 9 p.m., and if we weren't inside the parking lot fence by the time it closed, we would not have any access back in until the following morning. We decided to stay at a different hotel that night. I'm not sure what the hell happens there, but we weren't trying to find out. Story 13. One of my first jobs, I was a houseman, told to report to management with another houseman. They assigned us to clean a room where apparently some thorn beat the cow out of his wife and kid. Blood spatter everywhere, ceiling, paintings, carpet, even in the bathroom. Took the whole day to clean. It apparently happened that night or the night before, and we had to clean it after the cops left. That cow was so infuriating and saddening. Story 14. Not my story, but my nephew worked at a motel in Northern California about 15 years ago. Folks in one room complained about a bad odor from the room next to them. End of the hall. When Mark unlocked the door and went in, there was a decomposing body. This was one of those places that rented places by the week or month. He said he will never forget the smell. Story 15. Worked at a hotel with a big banquet center. It was in a German-themed tourist town. For obvious reasons, there weren't a lot of Jewish folks that came to town. Well, the banquet sales team managed to convince a Jewish couple to have their beautiful wedding at our facilities. Everything went smoothly through the ceremony. In between the ceremony and reception, the bridal party, including bride and groom, were all relaxing outside the entrance in between pictures and having a quick breathe. Important context here, the banquet entrance was right by the restaurant and main entrances to the hotel. As they're waiting, it just so happens that a jeep full of guys in full Nazi regalia pull up and ask where they can get lemonade. There was also a World War II reenactment happening at the municipal park a block away from the hotel. I've never seen people go from pale to seething red quicker than the bridal group. As the manager on duty, I couldn't comp things fast enough for them. You name it, you can have it. Story 16. I was a bellman at a hotel in my city during my college days. Occasionally, we had conventions and whatnot, and this particular one was centered around horses. I was helping this old lady, 70s, with her luggage and waiting on her. Before we got to the front desk, she asked to use the restroom in the back behind the front desk, but was not allowed. Front desk told her there was a bathroom down the hall. Honestly, it wasn't too far, maybe a 20-second walk. She declined, checked in, and we headed to the elevators. We get to the elevators. Luckily, it's just her and I. She starts squirming when we get in the elevator, saying, Oh, God. Oh, no, that sort of cow. All of a sudden, I hear gurgles, farting, starting noises. Not super loud, but enough to get her embarrassed. She's apologizing, telling me to leave her stuff there and not worry about it. Let's just say I didn't get tipped, and I was nice enough to just push her cart to her door. Story 17. We had a popular band staying with us. One night, I was training a new night auditor when he came to tell me a man was walking around. I found him trying to get in a room. I told him it wasn't his room, and we started toward his room. I tried staying in front of him. He just kept grinning. He was drunk as well. When we got off elevator at his room, he said, sorry, didn't mean to embarrass me. I said, no problem, nothing I haven't seen before. Smile went right off his face. Story 18. Worked at a hotel during summer. Let us just say it wasn't the best one. 50 rooms and only two people at reception. We got usually super busy, so it wasn't easy to keep with everyone. We had a couple hiring for a week a room, and they had so many luggage. Me and my colleague was shocked of how many. Ended up by them stealing everything in the room, even the windows. They took out our windows. We both got fired that day. Story 19. My mom managed a small hotel in Tijuana, Mexico. Small family-run hotel where I helped out here and there when I wasn't in school or working at my regular job. We had a regular customer who was an older man, maybe in his early 70s S, who would come in once a month, usually pretty drunk, and stay the night, go back across the border the next morning. One night he comes in pretty late and a little more drunk than usual, but we knew him and my mom gave him the room key, nothing out of the ordinary. To get to the rooms, you had to go up a flight of stairs, maybe 15 steps, and my mom asked me to walk with him to ensure he gets up safely. As I'm told this, he had already started heading up, maybe seven, eight steps up ahead of me. I looked up and saw him tumbling back, hitting me along the way and taking us down. I fell on my peach but was fine. Then I looked at him. His head clipped the last step, a concrete step, and he was gushing blood immediately. I told my mom to call the ambulance immediately and put pressure on his head, seeing the mat at the foot of the steps already covered in blood. I tried to have him not move and had a towel applying pressure. Finally, the ambulance came and they took him. We kept a small bag he had with him to see if he had any contact info, but he had no phone and just a transit card. We went to check in on him at the public hospital, but he was in a coma and eventually passed away. 
I still think of him and his family, wondering if they knew where he was, but I don't think anything was ever figured out. Story 20. Some guy locked himself in his room, drank bleach, and passed away. It was three days until the body was discovered and he'd melted into the carpet. The smell is something I've never smelled in my life both then and now. Another person jumped off the eighth-story floor high on crack. He passed away. Another jumped off the second-floor balcony, drunk, and broke his neck. When I was in the Bay Area, I was expected to attain sweets and S for high-caliber people. One time, I was ordered to drive a VIP to a candy house to pick up candy. There's more. Story 21. Not a hotel that had a lot of excitement, but delivering room service once and there was a vibrator on the desk, turned on. So it was that aggressive vibrating plastic on wood sound the whole time. She was middle-aged, fully dressed, no flirting or anything. Had the vibe of, I don't give a cow, just give me my food. Made it funnier than it was hot, oh well. Story 22. Dude staying long-term with a co-worker in separate room. They were electricians working a job at our city's aquarium expansion. He found out his wife had been having an affair and wanted a divorce. He went to the bank and withdrew a majority of cash from their bank account. Put the cash in a few envelopes and gave it to his co-worker to hold on to for him. That night he pushed through the ceiling tile in his bathroom to get to the steel rafter. He tied off an extension cord into the sky himself. Housekeeper found him dead the next morning. A good friend of mine that I worked with had moved to a different city and worked for a different hotel. They had a guest that to the sky himself with the hotel phone cords. When they found him, they called my friend, manager, and the chief engineer to come up to the room. Without thinking, the chief engineer picks up one of the phones to call his department as he didn't want to broadcast over the radio. Looked at the phone without a cord and said, Oh yeah, story 23. My mom worked in a number of hotels across Austria and she has seen some stuff. She told me a couple of stories of guests taking a shower in the middle of the bathroom and floating the whole place on numerous occasions because it was apparently against their beliefs to stand in the shower to wash themselves. She also told me that the prettiest and cleanest looking women were the most disgusting people to clean after. From used tampons on the walls to cow on the floor, she has seen everything. But she also told me a story about a rich guy and his family pulling up to the hotel without any luggage. They went shopping, purchased the most expensive jackets and skiing stuff you can imagine, Monkler, North Face, etc. And when they were leaving, they left it there for the staff to take home, and they were super polite and friendly. They left her the biggest tip she received as a receptionist. Story 24. My dad works at Nice Hotel. He's head of maintenance. One early morning, he got called in because there was a huge leak coming down into the lobby. They figured out which room was above the leak and go knock on the door. No one would answer, so they open it, but the chain thing is locked. They hear the shower on and yell if anyone is in there. Finally, a guy comes over who had just been woken up from being passed out drunk opens the door, and he opens the bathroom door. His GF was passed out in the shower on top of the drain. They thought she was dead. Drunk hungover guy starts freaking out. They have to call the cops and ambulance. Girl ended up being okay, just super drunk. Anyway, the hotel immediately charges their credit card on file the max amount. It was like several thousand dollars in damage. They were obviously banned from ever staying at the hotel again. Story 25. There was a couple that checked in who from the get-go were very odd. He was maybe 45 and then she was in her late 20s, early 30s. Neither person was very attractive. He was from somewhere in Asia originally, and she was of Asian decent but seemed to be Canadian. No accent. As I checked them in, he proudly told me this was a blind date, and he was taking her there for the night as their first date. She seemed much less impressed with him than he was with her, but she was pleasant enough. About 15 minutes later, I heard on the radio that there had been some mistake. Housekeeping had made their room up with a king-sized bed instead of two doubles. I highly suspected this was not a mistake at all, and the receptionist confirmed that he had ordered a king-size bed, presumably telling her he ordered two doubles, to dinner time, where they proceed to have a huge fight in the middle of our fancy dining room, screaming at the top of their lungs in a language that was not English or French. After dinner, she went to the guest game's room to read, and he wandered around outside muttering to himself until it was time for bed. In the morning, when it came time to check out, I knock on their door to collect their bags. She answers very upset and just keeps telling me that he won't get dressed. I collect her bags and invite her to wait in the lobby. I notice him sitting on his bed muttering in his language quite. I inform him that he will have to get dressed and check out or he will be charged a fee and we may have to call the police. I told the managers what happened and they sent the head bellman to deal with this. By the time my supervisor showed up to check him out, he had put on his tidy whities but was still very angry and not putting on any more clothes. He was told he had 30 minutes to be off the premises or the police would be called. He eventually left. I hope she was all right. Story 26. I used to work as an admin for the sales department at a historic hotel. The hotel had a reputation for being haunted as all fudge. 
The housekeeping staff had various rooms and hallways they wouldn't go into because of all the ghosts. So the housekeeping department secretary would arrange for a priest to do a blessing on the haunted zones. It made lunch chat interesting. So, Runama, how was your morning? Eh, gave some tours, assembled some packets. And you, Carol, called Father Bob to come make the ghosts go away. Beyond that, it was a pretty nice place to work. Lots of perks, like discounts and free meals. Story 27. I worked the night shift at a hostel. I got fired because some drunk guests threw furniture off the rooftop terrace and it got stuck in the power lines. The fire department had to come take it down. Luckily, no one was hurt. Prior to the incident, I'd warned the owner that this group was a bunch of rowdy jerks, but she ignored me. Crappiest job I ever had. Story 28. A super pretty woman sits in my section past the last call at a super high-end hotel lounge. She looks deeply sad, but covers it well on the outside. She asked for an old-fashioned, thick Russian accent. I said, sorry, it's past the last call, no can do. She insisted she needed the drink. She said, just whiskey, then no need for a cocktail. I said no again. The look of desperation in her eye when I said no was uncanny. I usually never cave in. If I say yes to her, everyone else lingering in the lounge could throw a fit and ask for just one more, too. But just that look in her eye was unnerving, and I wavered and got her a double whiskey straight. I made it clear this would be the only one. She said nothing and slammed it back. At this moment, someone in the background caught my eye. A man, a very intimidating man, was keeping his eye on her from a distance. I realized it seemed like she knew it. He was part of why she was so on edge. As soon as he noticed me notice him, and that my wheels started turning, he came over and gave me cash. He either didn't speak English or chose not to say a word to me and simply handed me more than enough money to pay for her drink. I could see her physically tense up when he got there. They went upstairs together to the rooms. A few moments later, he came back down and she didn't. He eyed me before getting in a car outside. I was so intimidated I froze. I didn't do anything. I finished my closing duties and went home no more than an hour later. I can't help but think she was a trafficking victim or being pimped out against her will. Maybe initially by choice and then became exploited by this man. I have no idea. I should have called the police. I should have done anything. I don't know. I think about her to this day. I feel immense guilt for not doing anything. I have never seen another human in a state like that since. My eye contact with her is burned into my brain. I wish I could have saved her. I will go to my grave feeling guilty for not acting. I think I didn't know what to say to the police. I was so scared. Worst ever craziest experience. Edit to add the context of the hotel. Story 29. A regular visitor to our hotel just had his marriage collapse, was really vocal about it all on Instagram, and a talented photographer, so had a couple thousand followers, posted about how he wanted to terminate himself in our hotel. We get a call from the cops. They tell us to go check on him. We go up to his room and sure enough, bottle of pills and a couple of scotch bottles on the coffee table, and he is hammered. We were just checking his TV worked as there were outages in the building. Cops arrived and calmed him and he left quietly the next morning. But then a week or two later, he posted on Instagram that he had literally tried to his own head off with a chainsaw in a hotel car park up the road from us. He posted pictures of it. His neck and face were sliced up, and he ranted how it's ridiculous they won't just give him his car back and be on his merry way. Hotels are an interesting world. I hope he's doing much better wherever he is now. Story 30. I'm not a worker, but when I was a kid, my mother, sister, and I lived in a penny motel, like a crack motel. And the dude at the end of building blew up his meth lab in his room and burnt the whole place down at like 3 in the morning. Then we went and lived out of the car at the beach, which to 10-year-old me was infinitely preferable. Story 31. Sadly, a lot of take place in hotels. Imagine grandma and grandpa took you to Treasure Island, Florida, to stay at the beach for a week, and you were on the way to breakfast. Only the guy a few rooms down terminated himself last night, and you were met with a full body bag right outside your room. Also, the head maid was prostituting herself. Also, close the blinds to your pool-facing room when you have close relationship after a wedding you drank too much at. Finally, those breathe detectors go off for all kinds of breathe. Story 32. Can guests add something to this? Was staying long-term at a motel for work 49 weeks. Had my dollar 10K CAD station there and 55 inches TV I use as my CAD monitor. Because I also worked on site, I would leave the PC and didn't trust anyone, so I got a couple cheap Wi-Fi cameras and hid them in the room. It sends alert when movement, and I saw the housekeeping woman come into clean room. Quit watching, but it records it anyway. Don't know why, but I checked and watched it through at like 10x speed. Stopped midway through to see housekeeping woman on my bed, pants and undies off, with a used pair of my boxers. I checked out Story 33. I'd already commented in a previous post like this about my co-worker's experience with someone accidentally setting off a gun in their room. Basically, everyone was lucky there was no one on his bed or in the next room. My own story, I had a woman walk in drunk as fudge, 
to the point that she almost walked into the sliding doors we have for the front, asking for $1.90 on a room and claiming she knew the owners. $90 is really low on a slow night, and I was informed that anyone who got special treatment would call the owners directly. I was really new, so I panic called my manager because she was starting to get mad and pushy. She left, came back a few minutes later, and my manager walked over from the next door hotel he also works at and told her that if she came back, he would call the police. I guess she came in the next night and dropped off a gift card for me as an apology. However, the card had no money on it. Story 34. Not in the industry anymore. But in college, I worked during the summers as a camp counselor at a very exclusive five-star beach resort in a very wealthy enclave. I was a broke student, so for extra money, I'd sign up on the official babysitter roster to sit for guest families, who were very wealthy and usually very generous. That said, though, you'd be shocked at how many uber-rich parents have absolutely no concept of responsibility to their kids or respect for others. Many brought nannies with them, so I'd often fill in when the nanny had a night away. Numerous times, I'd go to sit a kid. The parents would say they'd be back by midnight, and they wouldn't return until the following day. Once, a mom and dad disappeared to a nearby high-end party area, decided to get another hotel room, left their toddler daughter with me, crying, for 36 hours. No one could reach them. It was supposed to be a three-hour dinner date. The hotel? Exclusive hotels will not do anything. They don't want to make a fuss. I had to miss class, skip a family party, and forego all of my plans to sit with this poor child all weekend. When the parents returned with nothing more than an apology, they paid me for the first night, and that was it. I'd paid for their daughter's meals. Nothing. Again, the hotel demanded I do nothing about it. Now at 40, I kick myself for not making their lives a living hell. I could've. Child neglect like that is reprehensible. But I was young, broke, and needed that money very badly. Story 35. I worked at a front desk for a short time and had all kinds of stories. My favorite one was this lady who was super impatient, kept moaning and groaning even after I acknowledged her because I was on the phone and busy with another guest. She was waiting for less than a minute, and she reached over and kinked the phone cord like the way you kink a garden hose to stop the flow of water. I guess she thought it would stop someone else from being able to talk to me so I could give her attention. Story 36. Back when I worked in housekeeping, my colleague calls me over in a slight panic to come and look at something. She was cleaning a room a guest was still staying in, and there was a big old pile of brown, solid cow-looking matter, just plonked in the middle of the carpet. We both stood around it discussing whether or not it was cow, because there was no cow stench and something about it was uncow like She called the supervisor to let them know, and I went back to my rooms none the wiser. When the guest returned, he was charged for deep cleaning and asked what on earth he had done to the carpet. Apparently, he had drank that much Guinness the night before that he had vomited an almost solid brown lump on the carpet. He then proceeded to sleep with it festering in the room with him and then left it there when he went out for the day for us to deal with. Nice. It didn't smell of vomit either. Story 37. I worked as a housekeeper in upstate NY last summer for a really nice business hotel. Gruelingly tiring, but I was told there was a wedding that weekend, so my normal shift was three hours longer than normal. It turned out to be a Today Show wedding, the news channel. And I ended up cleaning both Savannah Guthrie's and Al Roker's room. Al left almost his party favors behind, I took the mug, and a big box of Nutter Butters, and left a $10 tip in his bed sheets. Savannah, on the other hand, reserved two rooms both next to one another. She left the room a mess. There were empty Starbucks cups in the bathroom, used face creams. The sentimental wedding party favors were left behind, too. The only food left in the room was a baggie full of limes and two bottles of Grey Goose vodka in the freezer. And the best part? The millionaire didn't tip. Story 38. It was after midnight, and one guest who was a usual staying for work whom was Hispanic. So it was a little hard to decipher at first what he was telling me. But he tell me there a man in his bed. He says he first thought it was his friend co-worker messing with him. But then he heard his friend in the bathroom and got freaked out when he looked and saw a white guy in his boxers in his bed, passed out dead asleep. So my first thought was a drunk wondered in somehow. So I called the police and then my manager, once the officer comes, we go to the room and wake him up to get him name and what room he's staying in. Find out he's down the hall and I go and wake his wife to come collect her husband. And she's confused because he had one drink and passed out at like 10 p.m. They were in town for a darts tournament and think he was possibly... He might have woken up not really knowing where he was, got confused, left his room, and then walked down the hall looking for his room. And the room he stumbled into had a loose lock on it and you had to push it really hard to close it all the way and hear the click on the lock. So he just pushed on the door and climbed back into bed. A day later, I was talking to the wife because she had thought he had been acting really weird after they left tournament. And he was really friendly with strangers, said he left a big tip, but then didn't remember anything from the night, and that he felt mostly embarrassed about it. 
and she said he only had two beers there because he was actually trying to win. Story 39. I worked at the hotel bar when I was 18. One night, one of our guests had a bit too much to drink at an outside party. He proceeded to break into some of the hotel offices and trash them, then wandered down and stole a forklift from the loading dock and rammed it into a wall, breaking a sewer pipe. At some point, his clothes came off. After he finished his fun at the hotel, he then ran across the street to a local grocery store, where he proceeded to wander around, causing thousands more in damages. Story 40. Another story. From early spring through late fall, the hotel I used to work for had at least one convention running every week, sometimes up to five any given week. During breaks of convention meetings, many people enjoyed relaxing outside to breathe or network. The hotel has two 30-plus floor towers, separated by a street that's often busy with taxi cabs and rideshare drivers picking up dropping-off guests. Because of the high volume of traffic and pedestrians on the street, the crosswalk between the towers has a north and southbound stop sign, a median stop sign, and a bright yellow painted crosswalk and median markings. One sunny mid-afternoon day, a late 50s woman began crossing the street with phone in hand. She never took her eyes off her phone when an unaware southbound taxi struck her, sending 30 feet down the street. She cracked her head on the pavement and was immediately taken to the hospital. Unfortunately, the woman passed away at the hospital. She had been visiting out of town with her husband, who had been at his conference meetings at the time of the accident. I was not a first-hand witness of the accident, but I had to review the CCTV footage several times in order to write an incident report. Moral of the story. Do not take stop signs for granted and keep your eyes on the traffic while crossing the street told. Taxi cab runs over and terminates woman who was looking at her phone while crossing the street. Story 41. I worked at the second hotel in my town. I have many very strange stories, from the one dude that kept figuring out how to get into our rooms, to crazy drunk old ladies peeing themselves while I'm hauling them off the property. But my favorite was when I was sitting at the front desk during night shift. I felt something on my leg look down and made eye contact with a large gray rat that was just climbing up my pants leg. It seemed just as surprised to see me as I was it. I screamed it ran off into the lobby. I immediately called my manager. We were good friends and she immediately started laughing. I said, I'm going to walk out, she replied. I wouldn't blame you. I ended up finding the thing behind a plant. It was pretty cute. Called my brother who arrived with one of those sledding discs. Together, we used the sledding disc as a shield and two brooms and got it out the front door where it promptly scampered across the parking lot. I also had one guest who was basically exactly like Ricky from Trailer Park Boys. He was hilariously belligerent. He threw a trash can across the lobby because he tripped on it in a really funny fashion. But all I could do was laugh at him. Called someone to come get him. His friends just sighed and said he's just like that. I probably could have called the cops. But we had just called the cops the day before, and it would have been a bad look. Story 42. One time, a few years ago, I worked at an extended stay property. People literally lived there for weeks to months at a time. So anyway, this couple comes in on my shift and they hand me their IDs, so I check. But the names don't match. They hand me more IDs and offer some shabby story about why they changed names or something. Either way, it was my first hotel job and since they found a matching ID, I checked them in. These people lived on the property for probably two months and managed to hoard out their room and try to be overly friendly with my staff. Nothing super worrisome, but they were odd every single day. One day, we had a staff meeting so all shifts were present. As the meeting wrapped up and my night audit guy went to his car, he started talking to this couple before leaving. Out of nowhere, at least 10 cars fly into the parking lot and out pop men in uniform with guns drawn. My poor audit guy was confused for a co-conspirator with this couple, and I had to run out with my hands up and beg them not to my staff member. They handcuffed the couple and took them away. We were left with a suite full of nonsense that we shoved into storage, and about a week later we found a local news article about the incident. Turns out the FBI came and arrested them after tracing them countrywide for fraud and theft. They would make fake business, take 50% upfront payment for labor, and skip town. So yeah, that was exciting. They also left us with bedbugs in their room. Another time at the same hotel, we got scammed out of $15,000 in room revenue because the GM wasn't charging this entire gypsy commune weekly, and they up and left one day. And there was a who worked out of a room. She left without payment, too, and left behind toys, batteries, and wigs. I don't know how that hotel didn't scare me out of the industry altogether, but I love the property I currently work for. Story 43. I was working as overnight security at a major upscale chain hotel in Eugene, Oregon. I was summoned to the front desk to escort two women, late arrivals, to the room where their party had already arrived. Later, patrolling the underground parking garage, I found two men breaking into a car. They literally had a stereo in hand. I saw their car had several other stereos in the passenger seat. They reacted in a threatening way, 
so I said that I was just going to leave and pretend I had not seen anything and backed out quickly. I went to the front desk and called the police, circa 2000, no portable phone. While I was talking to dispatch, the front desk guy says that he recognizes the description, and days he thinks they belong to the same room where I took the women earlier. By the time police arrive about 40 minutes later, hey, their station was a whole two blocks away. I find the two guys on the videotape from the previous shift, VHS, and confirm they are the same guys. Front desk realizes they had felt doubts about the ID that was presented with the credit card that secured the room and contact the provider, who have actually flagged that CC, pre-full automation, as a concern. Show police the evidence, they call backup. Four more cops arrive, I take them to the room. Occupants making a lot of noise, there are obviously more than four people in there. Police knock and announce, room goes quiet, they try to pretend nobody is home. Police advise through the door that they have probable cause to search and that hotel will unlock the door to facilitate. Hotel unlocks the door, but it is on a chain. They kick the door and enter. Like eight people are in the room, along with bags of stolen mail and a real official driver's license printer. But they can't find the guy who presented the CC, and nobody inside is saying anything. Everybody is cuffed and put under arrest for fraud and theft of mail, etc. Also, the two women I had taken to the room were missing. While waiting for the wagon, again, like 40 minutes, the cops bring in an unmarked car and we go for a drive around the neighborhood, where we find each of the women fleeing the scene nonchalantly and separately, on foot. They were super easy to spot. Both were attractive and wearing distinctive high-end athletic wear. It turned out that one of them was one of the ringleaders. While still waiting, one of the other cops drives to a neighboring building and shines his spotlights up. Notices that on the balcony below the room in question, someone is hidden behind the air conditioner. The guy who rented the room, under a fraudulent alias, turned out to be a professional firefighter and the other ringleader. And he just climbed over the railing and dropped into the balcony below when the cops arrived. He would have probably escaped, but he had a foot sticking out and bright white sneakers. The resulting investigation netted 35 convictions in seven western states and dismantled an even bigger ID theft. I testified before a grand jury, which was the key element in the probable cause for the entry that led to all the evidence. But none of that is the craziest part. It turned out that the worst criminals on the scene were actually two of the cops, who were both convicted just two years later for serially assaulting two dozen women while they were on the job, starting during that same period, with several more cases being discovered over the years, suggesting that many more victims likely exist around that college town. Worse, their command knew about several very similar claims against the pair and did nothing until he attacked a cadet who was riding along with him, who happened to be roomies with a law student. One of those cops is currently 20 years into a 96-year mandatory sentence. Story 44. Good-looking guy stays at our small hotel for business every few months. Comes down to the front desk one night asking if we saw a blonde woman leaving. We had not, but we also didn't see her arriving because they came in through the side entrance. Guy goes back up to his room and calls down a couple hours later, explaining that his company and the police will be in contact for security footage. No worries, we said. What's the problem? Guy had brought it to his room who convinced him to go to the liquor store while she stole all of his work electronics and valuables out of his bags. He was mortified, obviously, and none of the girls in the lobby had a crush on him after that. Not because of thee, but because he was a moron. Story 45. Arguably, the rule at any hotel front desk is to not give out room keys without verifying ID. The reality is that throughout the industry, it's pretty common to use your best judgment and provide a key. So long as the guest can at least verify some information on the reservation, address, phone number, etc., if they don't have their ID on them. This wasn't at my hotel, but one my dad worked at. Guy comes up to the front desk and manages to get a key to a room under his wife's name. He goes up to find his wife and the man she's having an affair with. Husband murders both of them, then terminates himself. Years later, I still think about the front desk clerk who gave him that key. I became an absolute hard-ass after that and never gave out another key without complete verification. Story 46. There was a guest who was literally in the hot tub in front of people. Police were called and he was arrested. The next morning, Arrested man's boy lover came down to the front desk and demanded an explanation, and kind of got mean about it. Turns out this man was my co-worker's ex-boss, so she got to tell him off and tell him that his lover is now a close relationship criminal. He left shortly after that. Story 47. So I show up for my normal shift at 5.30 a.m., and there's a rollaway bed sticking out of a broken picture window on the second floor. I notify my boss, he notifies the manager, and just for insurance we bring the cook, all of us go down to confront whomever this is. There's an entire minor league baseball team passed out drunk or to the sky over, laying this way and that in the room. They have broken about everything that can be broken, shoved a bed through the window, vomited everywhere. 
Last I knew the manager was demanding they pay for the whole mess before leaving the property. Story 48. A friend of mine works in hotel management. When she was at the front desk one night, she checked in a really nice older couple. They talked for a while while she was checking them in, and the couple mentioned how they had been married for over 40 years and had grandkids. The couple was there a couple nights, and when they left, they were just gone. They didn't check out. But then the police came, before the room had even been cleaned. Luckily, they needed access to the older couple's room ASAP. It was a crime scene. Apparently, the older man terminated his wife, carried her out to the car, put her in the front seat, and put her seatbelt on. Then he drove a few miles down the road, don't know what his plan was or where he was going, and he got pulled over for speeding.